wanted me to say and nobody to say it to, but on the CD, somebody had to be listening. <laughs> that's the desires that he puts in our heart the way he created us to be, and that's the desires he wants to fulfill. In every heart, in every life, he wants to fulfill those to the place that you just get so excited, you just, you just can't stop. I got to tell somebody about Jesus because it's just about to blow out my ears. <laughs> that's the desires of your heart. That, that's using that channel. That's using that connection with God that He created, that it's always available. And we realize that when we begin to trust it and we begin to walk in it, we realize how real it is and how much He can do through, through me trusting Him. And it's like, wow, why did I ever worry about all those other things? Why did I... Why did I work so many places and try so many times to make it on my own? And the whole time God was saying, well, one of these days, Callahan. Then when he first began to call me in the ministry and I felt excited about it, something happened in the church and I vowed to never walk in the church again. That's it. I'll never do it again. God said, that boy don't learn fast. <laughs> but he'll come around. And we'll all come around if we've accepted Christ and begin to walk in His, in his, in his teachings and in, in what He has for us. He'll begin to fulfill the desire of our heart to the point that we just can't really stay away anymore. I got to do something. I don't know what it is I got to do, but I got to do something. And when we, when we get to the place, say, okay, you know, I was thinking about that this morning when I was praying. The scripture says that, tells us that the, the, the parable about He gave three different guys talents. What, did you, what are you doing with the talent that He gave you? Well, I don't have any talent. Yeah, you do. You got something. There's something that you can do. If you'll ask Him, He'll show you what it is. If you'll trust Him, He'll help you do it. God, God never takes us to something. He takes us through it. He doesn't bring it to his head and say, okay, here you go, Callahan. <laughs> he takes us all the way through it. He takes us to where He wants us to be, to where we experience Him in a way that I'm, I'm in that ship channel all the time. I'm, I want to stay connected to Him all the time because that's where my joy, that's where my excitement is, that's where I get, I get fulfilled. It has nothing to do with anything except my relationship with Him. And He says, okay, now I want you to do this. Well, the more we're there, we're like, okay, it really doesn't matter what you tell me to do, I'm going to go do it. Because I've learned to trust that everything he tells me is for my own benefit. And there may be others that benefit from what I'm doing, but I'm doing it for him. He, the Bible tells us do everything as if you're doing it unto God. So everything we do, we do it as we're doing it unto him, and he blesses us through it, and he blesses others through our obedience. Other people see God working in our lives. Go to Psalms 9. Psalms 9, Psalms 9 verse 10. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee. Those that know his name will put their trust in him because we seek him out. Maybe only periodically and time again and once in a while, but pretty soon it gets to be more and more and more as we see him work in our life to the place that we're, we we're just diligently seeking the Lord and what, what he's going to do next. Greg and Susie went to Yuma this weekend, and they're doing an event in Yuma today, and they did one last night. And I would have liked to have gone with him. I told him I'd really like to go, but, but I'm, so, I'm supposed to be here, and I'll be here. But I'm excited because we're going to do a four-day event with him out in Kansas in May. And we're planning to. Good Lord willing, we're going to go out there in May and do four days out there with him. I told her, I said, I, I know that God has told me back in, back in 2017 that 2018 was going to be different. There's going to be things that are going to change. 2018 is not going to be like the rest of the years you've experienced. There's going to be, there's going to be different things. And to be ready for them, I told Susie, I said, you know what? I'd love to be with you all down there, but I'm excited about what God's going to do in me. And I'm excited about what God is going to do in 2018. I don't know what he's going to do, but I can't wait to get to the rodeo. <laughs> because exciting things, I know God, and I know exciting things will happen. I know that God is going to do amazing things and, 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 and everyone that trusts Him. See, I trust Him. It doesn't really matter what happens because I know God is doing it. Now, it, may, it might look like chaos to everybody else, but to me, I'm going to be excited because I know I trust God and God is doing amazing things. Now, I might not try to be amazing to everybody else until five years down the road, but I know God did it. <laughs> and I trust Him. When we, when we came here and we started here... 
and we started here in January on the 27th of January 2013 and East this would be six years ago this weekend six, next six weeks six years ago next week no six years ago this weekend Palm Sunday six years ago Jim come and said okay we, we had been here since January so we're actually February February March we had been here about 60 days, maybe maybe not even 90 days, when Jim said, okay, we're moving to Sholo, y'all take over. And I was like, wow, I can just barely spell preacher, now I are one. <laughs> but over the years, we've learned that God is doing amazing things. And the more we learn to trust him, the more we learn to stay in that, that canal, the more we stay connected, the, the easier it is to do the things he tells us to do because we know he's doing it. We pray, we trust him to do it, and whatever he does, we know that he did it. And we give him the glory for doing that. Singing that song, you know, when you're singing a song and the Spirit begins to move, it's like, wow, he's going to do something amazing. It's, it's amazing just to be in his presence, let alone what happens. Just to be with him. Is, is, is brings us peace, it brings us joy, it brings us comfort, it brings us all the things, all the fruits of the Spirit, just being in His presence. So it really doesn't, it's immaterial what happens or what He does, it's just being in His presence that makes it worthwhile. When Moses went up on the mountain for 40 days, he came down, he went back up. It's crazy down here, y'all are nuts, I'm going back to the top of the mountain. I love being in His presence. I love experiencing what He's doing. I love singing songs to him. I love feeling my heart fill up with his, with his, with his joy and with his comfort and all that he is and everything else just kind of seems does, like doesn't matter. I'm praising the Lord and I know he's there and, and so who can be against me if God be for me? I'm standing in his feet singing songs to him. Praise the Lord. That I have the, 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 the channel to be able to do that. You know, you know how many people there are in this world that don't even know that channel exists? Or have never even never even went sailed by the opening? They're just out there floating around in the water like, I don't know where we're going. I mean, really think about it. Think about life without Christ. Life without a knowledge of God or Christ, you just, well, that don't really exist. I've never seen it. I've heard about it, but yeah, some people believe it. Who is that? Somebody said something. Oh, y'all believe in that stuff? It's like, the first thing that came to my mind, you're just a ship out there floating around the ocean like, I don't know where we're going. The world's flat, the world's round, I don't know. Christopher Columbus sailed off. Everybody told me he's crazy. He's going to fall off the end of the earth. But you know, there's a, there's a, there's a <coughs> comfort in knowing that I can trust him. There's a comfort in knowing that wherever he's doing in my life, wherever he's leading me, there's something exciting about it. He's not doing it just to see if I'll follow. He's doing it because he wants me to experience something else that he's going to do in my life. And he wants to do the same thing in your life. He wants you to follow him and learn to trust him and learn to cherish the moments that you get to spend with him. Like, wow, that was, that was a God moment. God was in the middle of all of that. That's what he wants to do in your life. Go to Psalm 95, 1 through 3. Come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto Him with psalms. For the Lord is great, God and King, and a great King above all gods. He is the greatest. There's nothing better. There's nothing that can provide that peace and that comfort and that fulfillment like He does. If you brought me a bucket of gold, eventually I'd spend it and it'd be gone. And then I'd have a bunch of stuff that I didn't even know why I had it. But that bucket of gold of God's love is so perfect and so much more precious than the silver and gold of this world because it's fulfilling and it doesn't run out. You can't use it all up. You can go share the love that you get through the Holy Spirit. This is what makes it. This is what makes your relationship. That's what, what makes it obvious that you've been through the channel and you connected with God is the love that you have in yourself. That much makes it real. I don't know how I do that. I don't know how I do it either. But I do know why I do it because I love the Lord and He does it through me. 
It's what He's doing through your life that brings the joy and the peace and the comfort of all the things that we look for and everything else that we can find. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. Faith is the first grade of the Christian life. And faith is the graduation day of the Christian life. It's by faith. It is impossible Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. We have to learn to trust Him. We have to allow Him to do things in our life. Trust Him a little bit. He'll do, a, he'll do great things. And as He does more, the more we trust and the more we grow and the more at peace we are with the world and the things in it. Okay, the world is here. I understand more and more all the time how this works. You get, the, you get the big picture more and more the more you trust Him because you begin to understand, you know what, this stuff here really isn't important because I've had a big portion of it and a lot of the, the biggest portion of it has all gone away. And it didn't bring me any joy, it didn't bring me any happiness, it just brought me some bills. You can go get all the toys you want. And the bills hang around. You can wear the toys out, throw them away, the bill is still there. Just keep paying that bill. But see, the, 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 the bill for your joy and your peace and your happiness, that bill was paid. It's already been paid for and the, the canal has been built and the channel is open. All you got to do is learn to walk in. All you got to learn to do is learn to trust it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give Jesus a chance. I'm going to let Jesus begin to work. I'm going to pray every morning and ask God what He wants me to do. And how I do it. Because He says the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. But you're going to, you have not because you ask not. Get on, the knee, on your knees in the morning and say, Okay, Lord, I want to do something for you today. You tell me what it is and show me how I do it. And at the end of the day, you're going to go like, Whoa. Be careful what you ask for, right? We've all experienced that a time or two. Okay, Lord, teach me patience. We all know better than to ask that one, don't we? <laughs> but it's a great lesson. When the Lord teaches you patience, you really learn it. That's why we, we learn not to ask for it. Because we know the lesson is coming and we know it's real and we know you really do it. We don't ask God to teach us patience, we know he will. So ask God what you can do for him, because he will. If you ask believing, he will do it. He promises whatsoever you ask in the way that is in my Father's will, that will I do. Well, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I, I just, there's just nothing I can do. Yeah, there's something you can do. I share a little testimony that Jackie, she's not here this morning. She really sits right here. I guess it was two Sundays ago after service she got home and she said, Lord, there's, there's really, you know, I'm not able to get around much. And, and, and how old is Jackie? 80, 86. 86. I can't see much, Lord. There's just really not a whole lot I can do. And the Lord told her, you have a telephone. You can call people and pray for them. So she said, okay, I'm willing to do that. And she said, her phone has not quit ringing. <laughs> Ask God what you can do. Talk to Him just like you talk to me. Talk to Him just like you talk to each other. Okay, Lord. The preacher said talk to you. So I'm going to just get out here on my knees and I want you to tell me what I can do for you today and show me how I do it. And at the end of the day, call me and tell me what happened. Because he has something. And it's exciting and it's joyful and it's fulfilling and it makes you happy and it, it gets puts goosebumps on your arms when the Lord does something. And you're like, wow. I would have never imagined. The song. Did you hear? How many went and seen the movie? Amazing movie. Amazing movie. I can only imagine. You can only imagine. You can't even imagine what God will do in your life. If you'll just, if you'll just turn your ship and head down that canal. All right, Lord, I'm going to connect with you through the Holy Spirit. I'm going to ask you to show me, and I'm going to follow you into whatever you leave me to do, and I don't care how deep the water gets, I know that you're in it because you brought me here. And watch what He'll do in your life. Watch the joy and the peace and the comfort that's going to come and the excitement and the fulfilling of the desires of your heart. He will fulfill the desires of your heart. I explained to Don, the one that came, Don came forward on a Sunday night three weeks ago. And Don plays music and he's played music all his life. And I told him, Don, I've been there, done that. And I can tell you right now, you will never enjoy, you have never enjoyed playing music like you will when you play it for the Lord. 
when you decide, okay, I'm going to take the talent that he gave me to be able to play the guitar and sing, and I'm going to do it under the Lord, you will never experience it better than you if you use it for what it was intended for. That's what he intended the talents that he gave you for his glory. And when you begin to use them for his glory, you will not experience anything any ever better in your life. Because the, the evidence of the Holy Spirit becomes real. And that's what you were created to do. To worship and to praise the Lord. That's what that's why he created uh, each and every each and every person on the face of the earth was created by him and for him was not anything created that wasn't created by him or for him. You were created by him to, to praise him. So give him that chance. If nothing else you can do, you can get on your knees. I sing praises to your name, O oh Lord. Even if you're by yourself. Everybody sounds good singing to theirself. <laughs> There's a lot of people saying, well, preacher, you don't know how bad I sound. <laughs> you can pretend you're Elvis. I'll sing praises to you. You can do that. And you can be Elvis if you want to. Just praise the Lord. He will work through your praise. He will bring you joy. He will bring you comfort. He will bring you peace. If you just do what he, what he created you to do. And use the talents that He gave you to do what He would have you to do with those talents so that He can fulfill the desires of your heart. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. Now thanks be unto God which always causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Paul doesn't leave anything out. Thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. It's all available. It's all right there. In that, in that channel, it's all in that connection. It's all in your relationship with Him. But you have to, you have to trust Him first. You have to come to a place in your life and say, "You know what? I've been around a long time, and I've done a lot of things, and and I've heard the gospel, and I've talked the gospel, and I've done all these things, but I've really never decided. You know what? I'm going to let God be in control. I'm, I'm just going to." As he, as he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey on Palm Sunday, just like this Sunday, coming in to prepare himself to give his life for us, we ride in to give our life for him. Amen. That through the life that I live, Paul says, yet I live, not I live, but Christ lives in me. Through the time that I spend here, I can glorify him. Even if I do it all by myself, in the closet or in the shower, or wherever, I can sing praises to his name. And he will glorify me praising him because that's what he created me to do. And through that, through that praise and through that time and through that, through that giving it all to him, he will lead me in the way he needs me to go so that he can fulfill the desires of my heart the way he created me to be. Think about that in your prayer time. Um, I think I've said this before many times. I, 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 the Lord led me to begin to do that several years back. Lord, create in me, create me to be, create in me the man you created me to be. You had a plan for my life when you created me. You tell us that in Jeremiah. So manifest it. I'm willing to go and do whatever you have me to do. You just created me the man you created me to be. Show me where I'm supposed to be. Show me what I'm supposed to be doing. And I'm not going to question I'm going to go and do it. When the Lord told us, told me on the second Tuesday in January of 2013 to start a Cowboy Church, I had no idea what I was going to do next. I had a tent, I had a canopy, I didn't even have a tent, I had a canopy and some chairs. Okay, Lord, I guess all I have is a canopy and some chairs. I'll go sit on the corner, set up the canopy and chairs, and that's how we'll start. And he said, well, you don't want to do nothing wrong, so call Jim. And through that phone call, here we are today, six years later. That was in January. I was, God had me unemployed at the time. <laughs> and in May, Dessa quit her job. So now we had zero income. But God had already prepared. God already had made the path. It was all 